application in musicology. So the idea here is, okay, we, we, if we have a knowledge graph, we can, we can exploit it, not using the embeddings or all this stuff, more machine learning related to MIR. Here, just the graph, and see if we can get something useful for musicology from the graph. So musicology is embraces study of history, theory, and practice of music from many points of view. And musicology is part of the humanities, so musicologists have to read a lot. Mm -hmm. Musicologists have to read a lot of documents, be in the library. So what is the computer <laughs> is able to read all for the musicologists and gives a, a summary, analytics, whatever, solve the question directly. So this is the idea. No? Uh, natural language understanding can help musicologists. So we did like three different applications. It's not limited to this, just what we have done. We did the relevance, analytics, and information visualization using the graphs. So we have the graph, and we can get the relevance, build analytics, or visualize the graph. So I did the relevance. So if we build a graph of entities, as the one I explained before, so we apply entity linking to every document, and we create this graph connecting all the entities. So for example, remember the biography of Wilco, we build the graph Wilco to alternative block, Alter Tempo, yes, correct. So you can see, you can imagine that this is a, these are hyperlinks. And if you click here, you go to Alter to Pelo Web with the biography. Okay, go to the article with the biography. Or if you click here, you go to the description of alternative drug. If you click here, you go to the gate run biography. So it's like if it were hyperlink. So we can use algorithms for that are used for search engines to rank this using the network of hyperlinks, like that Google does with the page rank. So we build first the graph of entities and then apply page rank. That's the idea and get the relevance of them. We have a score for them to know in the graph, and then we classify, we rank them, and then, okay, this is the most relevant entity. Um, so, that. so in a paper in this mid 2015, we build a knowledge base of classical music. We gather information from different sources. But then we have like about 1,000 biographies of flamenco artists, and we apply entity link into these biographies, and we build the graph of entities from this set of biographies and apply page rank and its algorithm to see what are the most relevant singers, guitar players, and dancers in flamenco. And we ask a flamenco expert to like, give us a list of the top 10 artists <coughs> in, uh, in each of these categories, in his opinion. He told that, oh, it's very difficult to have a unique list of artists, but OK, I will elaborate a list of 10 artists that might be in in a list of top 10. So he did this list, and we ran the algorithm also, and we compared them. We did the, and, and in the top five, we get very high precision page rank. So this is the list that the page rank gives us as the most relevant singers, guitarists, and bilateral <coughs> dancers. And it has a lot of sense, really. It's a mythical singer, <coughs> guitarist, Pablo Lucia, Ricardo, dancers also. So it means that, what? The idea of applying page rank over this works. And you can get the entity relevance. You can get artists or other entities. We did also in another dictionary and get the relevance of schools, schools of music and conservatories in the world. Uh, and, and you can get the relevance of any entity. So another thing we can do analytics. So we can extract whatever we want information extraction on, on, on a digital library, for example, we can get Artists, uh, the dimensions, settings, relations, sentiments, whatever, and we can compute different kinds of analysis. So I just give uh, now an illustration of some of the so that you can do. things. So we did a research with the Grob Dictionary, that is one of the largest reference works in musicology, and we get about 16,000 biographies and, and did the process of extracting information. We, we did and the linking, but we also extract some specific information like the role of the artist, the birth and death place, and they um, we also did relation structures and the biographies, and we did some like analytics. So here are the birth dates, an Instagram of the birth dates, the number of artists every year, 
so there are like, some tendencies that perhaps can illustrate the musicology and gives some ideas to the musicologist. We also run the, the number of <coughs> the role of the different artists in the dictionary, most of them are composers, are teacher, conductor, pianists. Well, we also try to analyze the migratory tendencies of artists. So we have the number of artists that was born were born in a country and the ones who died in that country and also in cities. And we found the most interesting thing we find is that in Paris it seems to be a very nice city to go in the last days of your life. <laughs> <laughs> so this was extracted from text. So the the data library has raw text and if you wrote do some analysis you can see inside that. So the idea in the future is that the psychologists can even ask a question and the system understand everything and, and get the answers. So, okay. We did another study of analytics that uh, is a diachronic study of the effective language. So the same data set that I told before we use for classification from Amazon reviews. So we have this data set that has like 66,000 albums. And we have more than 250,000 biographies, no biographies, but reviews, customer reviews. So these reviews come with a, a star rating given by the, the user who did the review. And we have for every album, we have a genre tag, we have metadata, what is the artist, the label. <coughs> so we have this information with music breaks, and we get also the year of publication of the albums. So at the end we have some information and what we did is we applied sentiment analysis to the customer reviews to, to get like the, the sentiment that is in every review and then did some average in terms of year of publication and year of where the review was written. So this is aspect based sentiment analysis that is a kind of sentiment analysis where in sentiment analysis you typically do like classification. You have a text and you give a label, <coughs> positive, negative, or neutral. But this aspect-based sentiment analysis, what it does is to, okay, we have a document, but perhaps there are different things inside the document with different sentiments. So this is what it does. So the idea here, in, in a sentence, we can have entities, we can have aspects that are like features that are described in the, in the text, like guitar riffs and vocals in this example, and um, we can have Opinion words, like great, sure, so great guitar beefs. So this is an opinion word that is referring to this aspect, guitar beefs. And all this is referring to this entity, beautiful drug, and it's a song. So this is the idea. No? So what we did is to do that on other reviews and get all the aspects and the, and the opinion words and give a score. So at the end, what we have is we have a review with a set of aspects like guitar, vocal, sound, whatever, and we have a score between minus one and one for every one of them, like saying how much the, the review is positive uh, inside to this aspect or negative. So, <coughs> using that, well, this aspect-based sentiment analysis is based on a, so based on a sentiment lexicon, so this is score, it's based on a sentiment lexicon. So a sentiment lexicon is a dictionary where you have a lot of words and you have a score for each word associated. So you have great and perhaps for great you have one. You have good and you have 0 0.7. You have bad and you have minus 0 0.5 or whatever. You know? So you have other words and every word has a, a, a score. So using this dictionary of the scores, the idea is to identify first look nouns, uh, search nouns in the review, like noun phrases, and, and look also at adjectives. Um, which adjectives are near noun phrases? And what is the score of these adjectives? Uh, there is a negation in between, what is the distance from the adjective to the, to the aspect? So using all this stuff, with some rules, we build these uh, scores for, for a review, for the aspects in a review. So then, what we did is like we average all these scores for a review, and then we get like a score of the review between minus one and one, and then we average all the reviews in two different ways. 
we take address them by the review obligation year, mean where this review was written by the customer, when, when was written, and by the publication year of the album. So when was the album published? This review. So this review is about an album and when was this album published? So classifying, averaging the reviews in terms of this. So this gives us an idea from a customer perspective and this from the musical perspective. So <coughs> here is the standing by review publication year. So when the review was written. So we have the data set of Amazon is from 2000 to 2014. So here we have the average score of the of the sentiment analysis for here for example all the reviews published in 2010. This is the average score of all the reviews. So we have this. And this is the average rating that the user gives because we have every review has a rating between zero and five stars given by the user that write, written down the review. So this is the average of all the scores given by the user for all the reviews written this year, for example. So more or less, we don't see any correlation between the sentiment and the, and the rating. You know? So but perhaps we think, OK, perhaps the sentiment is related with another thing, with the economy, perhaps. So this is the GDP product of the United States. So this is the economy you know, in 2008. For example, this is a, an hypothesis, no? Why not? Or what happened in 2008? So because we see that in 2008 we have a high peak. What happened in 2008? Well, there was the election of Obama. And <laughs> perhaps this was like people had a lot of hope and used more positive adjectives in, in general in their life. Perhaps this is related to that. Now we, we should see what happened here. No? So, <laughs> By the way, this is just an hypothesis and we, we don't provide any support for that. But we did also, as we have also the genre labels for the albums, <coughs> the average by, by genre. So all the albums, all the country albums, all the jazz albums, all the music. And we see that most all of the genres has to speak in 2008, but country doesn't have it. So. That's also an economic crisis. Yeah, yeah, most, that was what we did, which uh, I said before, not this. Economic crisis. Oh, yeah. This is 2008, 2009. This is, uh, okay, so and if we average by aspect, so as we have in every review, a score for different aspects like song, lyric, whatever. Almost all the aspects has this pipe in 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 2008. So the the, the reviews has slightly more positive adjectives talking about them. So, well, further studies necessary to validate any of these suggestions and correlation as mean obsession. Also, but they are interesting insights for musicologists to study this. No? So, we also did the study from the point of view of the year of publication of the album. So, here, for example, we have the average sentiment of all the reviews from albums published in, in 98. Even the review have been published in, in 2014, for example. But this, this review was about an album that was published in 1990. So all the reviews. And here, the rating. So here we see really a strong correlation between the sentiment and the ratings from this point of view. We compute personal correlation and get 0.75. It's pretty high. So there is a clear correlation between the sentiment and the ratings. It means that perhaps we can use the sentiment to predict the rating and also that the sentiment has kind of sense because it is correlated with the rating. So okay, so we also did this study of the the average of the sentiment by genre because we have information of genre. So this is the reviews of pop and the reviews of gray albums. And this is the sentiment score. So and we see that there is a peak like in the 60s for pop. Um, in the late 70s and beginning of the 80s for red. So there are more positive adjectives in the reviews of album published in this year. And the same as this, so perhaps the Beatles is influencing this positiveness or the Bob Marley and, and all the golden age of red is here. So we can start the evolution of genres 
Mm -hmm. Using that. This is the idea. No? Um, okay. Um, finally, information visualization. Well, that's simply that if you have a knowledge graph, you can visualize it, and that can be very useful for creating <coughs> documents. So you have, may have a digital library, you have running relation extraction, and then you are able to navigate through the library using the graph. You have a structure, so you need some exploratory work with that.